Okay, hi. Um, we're going to talk about, some people ask me, what do I eat in a day? So, basically, if I have a work day, I usually eat the OMAD diet. O-M-A-D, one meal a day. And then I eat, make sure I get some beans for dinner. So here's the typical beans. Um, get them in the camera. These are French green lentils. They're good. Red lentils are good. Garbanzos are good. Black beans are good. I like all of them. I get, always get them organic. Um, so beans got a lot of fiber. Perhaps lentils are one of the best because of their small diameter they got more outer surface area fiber relative to their central contents increased fiber means slower digestion so you get more prolonged satisfaction of hunger and that's one of the great things about starches low caloric density such that they stretch the stomach early satisfaction of hunger and subsequent delayed it takes a lot of time for the intestinal tract to remove the fiber from the beans so you get prolonged satisfaction of hunger with these starches beans are an example of the starches now, I probably will only eat about two cups of beans a day. Um, I don't eat more than that. I'll sometimes have just one cup a day or none. And the reason is beans are quite high in protein. You know, beans can get up there in protein, 25%, 30%, even some of them. So I'd like overall with a plant-based diet to keep my protein intake probably in the ballpark of 10% or less. And this is all animal plant protein, all plant protein, never any animal protein. I'm 100% plant-based in my diet. Um, I'll often have rice. Here's the rice. And as you'll notice, it's white rice. I only eat white rice because there's less arsenic in the white rice. And you also want to buy your rice from somewhere that is low in arsenic. I have another video about the issue of arsenic in rice, the gist of it being primarily the chicken farmers sold the chicken poop to the rice farmers, and the chicken poop had arsenic in it because they gave them um, arsenic containing medicines to treat intestinal parasites for the chicken. So, anyways. The rice should only be organic. Buy it from a place low in, um, in arsenic. California is relatively good compared to the southeastern states because they used to have cotton crops there and they'd spray uh, arsenic-related pesticides on them to treat the boll weevils, so to speak. Um, what else? Put Rinse the rice first and then cook it in extra water. Those are all ways to reduce the arsenic content. All right, what else do I like for dinner? I like blueberries. Um, let me show you blueberries. Where's my bag of blueberries? I know it's something cold here. I think I got a bag. Okay, here's a bag of blueberries. What do I like about them? When you eat blueberries, like here's a typical bag. Um, they got a lot of potassium, uh, 180 milligrams relative to their sodium, zero. Okay, that's a good ratio, 180 milligrams of potassium to zero sodium. That's actually the fastest way to tell if a food is good. You're like, when you're not sure, is this food good or not? Look at the potassium to sodium ratio. It should be at least five to one, preferably 10 or more. And this is not uncommon in a plant food. 180 to zero, 180 milligrams potassium to zero sodium. We're, <coughs> excuse me, we're biologically designed to eat lots of potassium because P for potassium, P for plants. There's tons of potassium in plants. And potassium is a vasodilator. That's what you want. Open arteries make everything good. Open arteries get your brain to work better. They get the Johnson to work better. They keep the heart pumping optimally. They lower blood pressure. Nowadays, people eat too much processed food, and they put too much salt on their food and fast food and junk food, and that's got really high sodium. And so when that sodium gets real high, it's a vasoconstrictor. It inhibits endothelial nitric oxide, and the gist of it is it impairs the function of the sodium-potassium ATPase pumps on the plasma membranes of every cell in your body. In particular, the smooth muscle cells of the small arteries, when there's high dietary um, sodium and low potassium, the sodium-potassium ATPase can't work, and that ATPase establishes the resting membrane potential and the sodium uh, electrochemical gradient across the plasma cell membrane of your smooth muscle cells and every other cell in your body. And that is coupled to the energy transport of calcium out of the cell. You don't want high calcium inside your cells because calcium is like the on-off switch. Okay, and when calcium is high, it activates the smooth muscle cell to contract. And a contracted smooth muscle cell, it's like the circulatory system becomes all tight and clamped down. And the heart has to pump the blood through. So, when you um, are dietarily high in sodium and low in potassium, your entire vascular system becomes contracted. And the heart, in order to pump adequate blood to the brain and elsewhere, has to pump harder. So you become hypertensive. So you don't want that. Hypertension is the number one, I actually think it's the most important disease because it leads to everything else. 
Hypertension is indirectly, it's connected to diabetes. Um, indirectly, it's connected to obesity. But most importantly, it's connected to atherosclerosis. And it diminishes blood supply to the brain. Makes you stupid over time. Diminishes blood supply to the kidneys. As the kidneys become underperfused with a lack of blood, they start to run the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that gives you high blood pressure. Okay, more of the food. Um, these um, frozen vegetables. Convenient thing, way to get your veggies. Let's look at the sodium potassium ratio here. Potassium, 210. You can't see it there. Uh, sodium, 15. So, again, more than 10 to 1. That's what you want. Um, let's see what else. I often have apples. Apples is just when I feel like I'm still hungry. I got room for more calories. You know, you judge by your weight. If you exercise a lot, if you feel you're skinny relative to um, where you want to be, you know, you can eat more apples. You know, that's how a bear fattens up for winter. I'll eat more fruit. So you got to decide where you want your weight to be. Um, here's potatoes. Potatoes are great food. Let's take a look at the sodium potassium ratio on here if they got it. Um, no, nah, I don't even have it on there. But potatoes are probably the healthiest food in the world. And potatoes only have about 1% fat. Sweet potatoes maybe in the ballpark of 3% fat. And they're both also very low in protein and very low uh, both of them are low in protein and low in fat. That's good. Most people, 99, more than 99%, they're eating too much protein and too much uh, fat. You really don't need that much. And I, we also talked, I think, a little bit um, in my Chef AJ lecture and um, elsewhere that uh, there's something called secret fat. Secret fat means that the fiber that you eat in these plant foods, and all plant foods are basically carbohydrate and fiber. Uh, meat is basically protein and fat. So protein and fat are both bad. You want to minimize those in your diet. Whereas carbohydrate and fat and carbohydrate and fiber are good. When I say carbohydrate, I mean complex carbohydrates. That's a starch. That means like a polymer or glucose that is only slowly digested because of the fiber. Um, and by the way, somebody asked me about what's the funny stuff on my nose. It's because of my glasses. It's no big deal. All right. So anyways, the point that I'm making here is <clears throat> the fiber goes into the colon and the good gut bacteria. There's basically two types of gut flora. There's good gut bacteria that come from eating a plant-based diet. And there's bad bacteria that comes from meat or from processed food. And those are the two main categories of bacteria. And here's the reason why. When you eat plant foods, the phytonutrients in the plants <clears throat> and the fiber feed the good gut bacteria. And we, our ancestors thousands of years ago, they ate mostly plants. You know, we talked about this. You got flat teeth, your jaw goes side to side, we can't make vitamin C, amylase in our saliva, starch taste breast receptors in, your, in the tip of your tongue. You got hands like a herbivore, you got a long gut like a herbivore, etc. So we're designed to eat plants biologically. And the relevance is we've been eating them for many, 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 many thousands and more years such that plant-based gut flora is symbiotic with us. That's an important point. It is symbiotic with us because the plants want you to live. The plant bacteria want you to live. So they're going to try to help you keep you alive. They got a nice place to live. For a, for a bacteria, that's a good apartment to live in your colon. So they want to keep you healthy and they what they'll do is they take those short they take those fibers and they make them into short chain fatty acid so the two carbon acetate primarily is absorbed goes through the portal vein to the liver and you can make it into even number of carbon fatty acids the three carbon propionate this is another short chain fatty acid again produced by plant related gut bacteria from the fiber we eat that also goes through the portal vein to the liver made to make odd number of carbon fatty acids much less common in the human body but then the four carbon uh, fatty acid is the butyrate. And that one, two-thirds of the energy supply to the colonocytes. Colon for colon, site means cell. Colonocytes are lining cells of the colon, is used by those colonocytes. And they use it to maintain their tight junctions to prevent leaky gut. So that's a very important point. The fiber actually contains a little bit of fat, in a sense, on how our body metabolizes it. And it protects you from leaky gut. Whereas the fat in meat, like saturated fat, for example, is amphiphilic, such that it has a polar end with the carboxylic acid and a long hydrocarbon chain that's hydrophobic. And that can function almost like a detergent and cause leaky gut, as can the emulsifiers, also amphiphilic, polar and nonpolar, that come from processed food. So what I'm saying is those are bad fats. They put you at risk for leaky gut. They're going to cause Rouleau in your blood, hypertension, insulin resistance, and all that bad stuff. Whereas the good fat is that indirect secret fat from fiber. And that's why somebody could be in a metabolic ward and only eat potatoes. They could only eat potatoes and water and be healthy and come out of there feeling better than ever after months. Okay, now I'll show you another starch I'll sometimes eat. Here's oatmeal, for example. Now, oatmeal 
Um, I like it. I can tell you, most of the really healthy vegan doctors and the guys I know who are mentally sharp and physically fit in their 70s and 80s eat oatmeal. It's a convenient food. But there's a couple secrets about oatmeal. You want to eat plain oatmeal. There should be no ingredients except for oatmeal. Um, and I say that because as soon as you start putting ingredients in there, almost all of them have MSG of some sort. MSG is tricky, monosodium glutamate. Glutamate is the most common neurotransmitter in the brain. It's about 80% of your brain neurotransmitters. And it's an excitatory neurotransmitter such that I worry, you overactivate the brain, you could potentially, you know, cause anxiety, and it's, it's a whole big subject. We'll talk about that some other time. Uh, but I'm simply saying is you want to avoid it if you can. And the way to avoid it is plain oatmeal. And I eat it only with water, never milk, dairy, there's all, there's a million problems with dairy. I don't want to talk about dairy, but I'm just telling you, plain water. If you want to flavor it up a little bit, blueberries are great, so are bananas, whatever you like, but... Um, it's also nice in the winter. It's cold to eat oatmeal to warm you up. All right, so these are some of the typical things I'll eat. Um, I also love sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are a little harder to buy than potatoes. You just go anywhere. It's easy to buy potatoes. You know, they're, they're all over the place. Um, I only eat organic. There's a lot of herbicides in non-organic food that you don't want. Um, and and I, I just read an entire book on the pesticides and herbicides in non-organic food. You always want to eat organic food. I will not eat non-organic food unless I have no choice. I mean, if I'm out at a social event, you know, it's always going to be full of MSG and herbicides, pesticides, non-organic, all that crap. But given the choice when you're, you know, by yourself, always eat organic, okay? You just protect yourself. They check the urine and the blood residues. Persons who eat organic have much, much, much lower uh, urine and blood residues, pesticides and herbicides. So it's in your best interest to do that. Okay, so those are the main things. When I have a work day, I'll eat the OMAD one meal a day. So I skip breakfast. I get a little more time to sleep, more time for everything else. Um, I find that convenient. I find that I'm mentally sharp. Um, I don't drink anything all day. I, it just has worked. And also, I lost a lot of weight. I was weighing about 188. And as soon as I went on the OMAD diet, the beginning of June 2021, you can see from my videos, I kind of shrank a little bit. Um, by the time it got to January, my weight dropped to 154. So from 188 to 154, 34 pounds pretty quickly. So that would be just a touch over six months. And I felt good the whole time, mentally sharp, able to work, you know, reasonably strong. I got a little weaker in the weight room uh, when I dropped 34 pounds. Uh, but for what it's worth, I was trying to be skinny. I wanted to look like Neil Bernard. I ended up looking like something out of an El Greco. Oh, sorry about the dogs. Anyways, um, the last thing I'm going to say in this video is if I need energy fast, I like beet juice. Any of the beet juice brands is fine. This is just one that's good. Um, I don't normally drink bottled water because almost all of them, they got something in their plastic you don't want, like polyethylene terephthalate. Some people like one of these uh, silica-containing bottled waters because theoretically silica is a chelator for aluminum. The guy, Christopher Axley, is the big expert on aluminum. Devoted to holes like that. His nickname is Mr. Aluminum. And he says that silica-containing bottled waters chelate aluminum. You know, how true is that? He seems to believe it, and he's the expert. And, you know, there's a lot of research citations for that. I don't know. But I try to avoid bottled water except under special circumstances. If I'm super thirsty, maybe I'll do it. If I have to give a lecture, I know it energizes me to drink some type of beet juice. I also know if I'm working out, I don't normally eat anything before a workout for a pre-workout meal. But if I'm doing a personal rep maximum, like a high repetition squats, so like, a, you know, my last personal rep maximum squats, I did 100 reps or 105 reps with 115 pounds, high rep squats with a safety squat bar. Safety squat bars when you got your hands in close. Um, it's, it makes it easier on your shoulders to squat that way. So anyways, what other food do we not talk about? We talked about sweet potatoes. Okay, also, the one meal a day diet, what's the justification for it? I had read, you know, the article, uh, Mechanisms of Insulin Resistance, Resistance and Physiological Reviews by Gerald Sheldman, MD, PhD, and he... Um, was talking about how glycogen storage can easily be maintained for 24 hours and it routinely is maintained pretty well for 48 hours. And when I say glycogen, I mean the ability of the liver to maintain blood glucose through its glycogen storage and through gluconeogenesis. So the point is it's very easy for the body to handle one day of fasting, so to speak. When I say fasting, I just mean I only eat dinner. So just the overnight until the next day dinner. And um, the Romans used to... I read a lot about Roman history. Basically, they didn't have any electricity, no light, so they just ate. They did a lot of work all day long. Then at night, giant dinner, go to sleep. Um, and I also knew from experience, on a Saturday, I'll want to read something complicated. Let's say I'm reading the biochemistry of diabetes or something like that, whatever it might be. And I'll be very interested in the book or the research paper, whatever it is. And 
I won't want to stop. I know as soon as I eat, I get tired because you go into parasympathetic autonomic, you know, the rest and digest phase rather than the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. You want to actually really be in a balanced phase. That's kind of what you are when you wake up in the morning. That's when you're smartest. You're also smartest because the brain cleans itself overnight through the glymphatic system. So what I'm basically saying is I don't want to eat breakfast. I don't want to eat brunch. And I really make lunch really later. I skip it in that context because I know my IQ drops about 30 points and I can no longer read complex material. I just want to sleep. Um, so, but I'll still, you know, if I have an easy day, I'm not doing anything too technical, I'll eat a, a, a lunch um, on my days off. So what I'm saying is I only do the OMAD when I have to work that morning anyways. Um, so that's the one meal a day diet. Otherwise, I'm typically going to be eating two meals a day. I'll always walk around while I'm while I'm eating. I got a little cushion under my chair. It's kind of like a high chair for a baby. I'm kind of short. All right. So, anyways, with the point is, I'll always walk around when I'm uh, when I'm eating. If no one's home, if someone's home, I'll talk to them. I'll be nice socially, you know. But if I and by myself, I'll walk around and get a lot of exercise. Because why not get exercise? That's what people did. Our ancestors they walked around looking for food all day, you know, hoping they don't starve to death. Um, and when you walk around, you can dramatically. Uh, lower the insulin resistance. Okay, so basically the glucose type 4 transporters within the skeletal muscle cells they go up to the plasma membrane either from insulin act activation or they'll go up to the plasma membrane from exercise. So you get the same thing as an insulin effect um, and that's a healthy thing. You really want about 80-85% of your postprandial glucose going into your skeletal muscles which happens in a healthy person. Okay, um, so that's the overview of what I eat. Um, if you got any questions, you know, go ahead and, and put them there. I'll try to answer the questions. Um, and uh, basically, the summary of this diet: it's low sodium, low fat, 100% organic, 100% plant-based, starch-based, extra calories from eating fruits. I'll eat a little bit of vegetables once in a while if they're available. You know, if there's some cauliflower or some broccoli, I always eat a salad because right in the middle of the of the molecule for photosynthesis. The chlorophyll is magnesium, and magnesium is a major vasodilator. Magnesium is your friend. You just get it from eating plant foods. Same thing. You get your potassium from eating plant foods. You get your vitamin C from eating plant foods. Um, I've been 100% vegan now for about three years. I I only I only supplement with vitamin B12, um, and I think it's the methylcobalamin. I think I wouldn't take cyanocobalamin. I don't want that. Uh, I would take methylcobalamin, like a sublingual, rapidly absorbed. You don't have to worry about all the gut issues. Um, and that's it. And I feel really healthy. I'm 58. I feel great. Energetic. Sharp. Um, so I hope that's helpful.